In today's video, we're going to learn how to create this infinite loop where we have snow procedurally falling through a scene. We're also going to learn how to add in an object and create this realistic snow that gets added on top of the object. And if you want, you could make the snow slowly grow. With that, let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor right from this button up here. Now we're going to press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now the main idea is we are going to create a plane and from the plane, we're going to have these particles falling down and along with falling down, we're going to have them move through some sort of a noise vector field to create the realistic snow. So let's go ahead and add in a plane by pressing shift A and searching for a grid. Now the grid has to be the size from which we want all of these particles to emit. So let's just plug this in and then change the size on the X and the Y to maybe 1.5. So now let's lift it up on the Z axis by either using a transform geometry node here or we can just select it in the 3D viewport and press G followed by Z and then we can lift it up to maybe two meters. Now we need a lot of points to be distributed on this face, which will slowly start falling. So let's add in a bunch of points by using a distribute points on faces node and plugging that in after the grid. Now I want it to be much more dense. So I'm going to change the density to maybe 35 or 40. And I want the distribution to change based on the frame number. So I'll press shift A and search for a scene time node and I'll take the frames output and plug that into the seed. However, since I want this to be a looping animation, I want this number to be the same every 150 frames. So I'll press shift A and search for a math node and I'll change this from add to modulo and I'll change the second value to 150. So essentially the output of this is going to go from zero to 149 and then it'll loop back to zero. And that way, irrespective of the number of frames in the animation, we're always going to get zero to 149 and back to zero to 149 and so on and so forth. Now we need to get these to start falling down. So to do that, that, we'll use simulation nodes. So let's press shift A and search for a simulation zone. Now let's take the points and plug that into the input to the simulation zone and take the output from the simulation zone and plug it into the group output. Now, since we want these to move down every frame, we're going to use a set position node and we're just going to have a very small motion on the Z axis. So let's go with a value of 0.001. And now when we play the animation, you can see how they slowly fall down. Now this might be a bit too slow. So you're going to have to play around with this until you get something that you're happy with. Remember, snow is not really like rain. So it's going to fall down much slower than how rain would fall because particles of snow generally drift along with the wind as well. At least that's what happens with light snow. So once you have a nice speed that you're happy with, you can go ahead and make it such that there are more particles emitted every five or six frames. So we'll go ahead and shift these over to the side and we'll press shift A and search for a join geometry node. And now we can join in a new set of points every single frame by just plugging that in over here. But I don't want it to happen every single frame. I want it to happen every fifth or sixth frame. So I'm going to use a technique that we used in multiple videos before, which is adding in a switch node, plugging that in here, using the true socket as the joint version and having the faults as just the regular points that are already created. Now to control the actual switch, we're going to use a scene time node along with a math node set to modulo so that we can determine how many frames we want this to loop with. So we're going to change it from add to modulo. We're going to take the frame and plug it into the first socket. And the second socket of this modulo node is going to be the number of frames. So I want a new set of points to come every five frames. So I'll type in five. And now I have to compare if this output is equal to zero. So I'll search for a compare node, change it from greater than to equal. I'll take this into the first socket and take the result and plug that into the switch. So now when we go back to frame zero and reset the simulation, you should see that every five frames, there's a new set of points being added in. Now, clearly this is also a bit too dense. So maybe instead of five, I'll go with 15 frames. And I'm also going to go to my output properties and change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. So now let's go ahead and watch how this looks. And I think that looks good enough. So we have to now add in some randomness to this to create the nice switch motion of snow. To do that, we're simply going to use another set position node. So let's select this and press shift D to duplicate it and then add in another noise texture by pressing shift A and searching for the noise texture. Now remember the noise texture is always centered around 0.5. We want it to be centered around zero. So we have to search for a vector math node, change it from add to subtract. 
subtract the value of 0.5 on all of the axes and take the color output from the noise texture and plug it into the first socket. We're going to change the scale down to something like one. And then we have to also scale the output down as well to reduce the strength of the noise texture. So let's duplicate the vector math node and change it to scale and maybe scale it by a value of 0.1. So let's plug this into the first socket and take this output and plug it into the offset. So now when you go to frame zero and you play the animation, you should be able to see them sway around. Now you see the problem is that they actually are now getting a z value that might just be greater than this so they're also going up we don't want that and also the effect is way too strong so let's start by reducing the effect of this scale so let's reduce that to 0.1 and now you can see there's this really nice drift that's occurring and i think that's actually good enough for what i was looking for so that's fine let's increase the end frame to 450 but we have to make sure that by 150 all of the points that are going to cross my camera view have already crossed so we actually have to see how many frames it takes for that to occur so we have to set up our camera let's select the camera press alt g to clear location alt r to clear rotation followed by r x 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees then we'll press 0 to go into my camera view and i'll press g y to just move it back then i'll press g z to lift it up and i just have to position it so that we see all of the particles just like that so now if you play the animation by about frame 200 i assume all of these particles do reach the bottom so maybe by around 250 to be safe so we have to make sure that the end value value is at least 250 plus 150. But just to be safe, I'll actually have the start value at 300 so that we can ensure a perfect loop. So in order to be able to set the start frame to 301, we're going to have to bake the simulation. And to bake the simulation, you have to save the file. So press Ctrl S and save it. Then go to the physics properties and make sure that you have the geometry node object selected, which was our default cube. When you have those selected, you'll get the simulation node section. You can expand the dropdown and hit bake. Once the bake is complete, you can go ahead and now change the start frame to 301 and when you play the animation you should get a perfectly seamless loop which means on frame 450 and 301 you won't be able to tell that there's any difference between 450 and 300 it should be the exact same which you can see right here 300 and 450 has no difference whatsoever now let's go ahead and actually convert these from points to real geometry by instancing some icospheres on the points so let's press shift a and search for an instance on points node plug that in after the simulation output for the instance let's just use an icosphere we'll plug the mesh into the instance and we'll change the radius down to maybe 0.01 subdivisions will increase to three and for the scale we'll just use a random value and we'll make sure that the min is at least 0.1 and the max can be maybe 0.8 and now we can take this value and plug it into the scale so now we have our snowflakes that are slowly drifting around and moving down and i think that looks perfectly all right next we have to set the material so let's press shift a and search for a set material node plug that in right after the instance on points and choose the default material itself then with our camera selected we'll go to the camera properties go to viewport display go down to pass bar 2 and increase that all the way to 1 then to set up the scene we'll change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and we'll change from object to world for the world to actually see the changes we'll have to change our viewport shading to render and we'll select the default light and press delete to remove it then we'll press period on our numpad to centralize the nodes and we'll press shift a and search for a light path node if you want to know more about the light path node definitely check out this video over here where i explain exactly what the light path node does then take this background node press shift d to duplicate it and then add in a mix shader node now we'll plug that in here and take this background plug it into the second socket we'll change this second one to a black value and the first one to a complete white and we'll take the is camera ray and plug that into the factor of the mix shader now you should have a black background with these white snowflakes falling of course if you want to play around with the actual snowflake material you can switch back to object make sure you have the cube selected and you should have the default material already applied because we use the default cube then you could reduce this a bit more if you want you could keep it as a bright white you could add in a tiny bit of blue it's completely up to you and what your requirements from the scene are however the next thing that we have to do is actually add in an object and place some snow on top of that object so to do that, we're going to use an inbuilt add-on called real snow, but first we'll just add in the object. So I'll use Suzanne. So we'll press shift A and under the mesh, we'll search for the monkey. Now we'll place the monkey appropriately. So just press G, Z to lift it up, S to scale it down, maybe some form of G, Y to just move it back. 
And then with the monkey selected, I'll go ahead and add in a new material by pressing this plus button. And again, you could change the color to whatever you think suits your needs. But I think that the shadows would definitely help reveal the structure of the monkey much better. Because right now we have the entire world lit by a white background, which is why we can't quite see any of the shadows. So to increase the shadows, we can go to our render properties and switch on ambient occlusion. Then we'll expand this and we can just increase the distance to maybe one meter. And we can increase the factor as well to something like five. And that way we get these really nice shadows around Suzanne and you can clearly see all of the crevices. Of course, you can always add in a subdivision surface model modifier by pressing ctrl 2 if that's what you want but i'll keep it low poly itself now we'll go to our edit preferences add-ons and we'll search for real snow make sure that real snow is checked and once it's checked you can go ahead and close that and press n to open your side panel now in the side panel you'll find a new option called real snow so just go down there and with suzanne selected you can press add snow i think the height of 0.3 will be way too much so i'll reduce it to 0.1 right at the start and then i'll click add snow now you can see how there's nice snow added onto Suzanne. So you can tap N and there you go. Now you have snow falling indefinitely and you have snow on top of Suzanne as well. So I think that's a really cool thing. You could add in your own logos as SVGs as well. And in case you're using an SVG, make sure that you convert it from a curve to a mesh by going to the object, convert and choose curve to mesh. So once you do that, it'll work for your SVG logos as well. And with that, you can always go to your output properties, change the output folder to wherever you want it to be. Double slash will store it in the same folder in which your blend file is stored. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video to create smaller file sizes. Encoding, I'm going to change the container to MPEG4 with an output quality of perceptually lossless. If you want to actually increase the snow over time, you can actually select the snowball object which is created when you add in the snow and just add in some keyframes for the scale. So maybe at frame 300, you can scale it down by just a little bit and then you can press I scale and then by frame 450, you can actually just scale it up a bit and then you can press I scale and then down here you can press T linear and that way you can see that over time the snow keeps adding on and it looks like there's snow being deposited onto Suzanne. But that obviously will not make it a looping animation anymore. But I think that's also also just as cool. And with that, you can finally press render animation. I hope this was a fun tutorial and you learned something along the way, whether it's the real snow add-on or how to loop particles using simulation nodes or just how to create slow falling snow. If you enjoyed it, there are hundreds of videos on my channel because I post videos every single day and there's definitely something or the other that might pique your interest. So it's worth going over and looking through the various animation tutorials that I have. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.